Emmy Award winning actress Katherine Heigl making her return to TV in a highly anticipated new NBC political thriller called State of Affairs. She stars as Charleston Tucker or Charlie, a brilliant CIA analyst who briefs the president on national security threats. It's a job that involves life or death judgment calls, often under pressure. Take a look. Oh, God, I've got an abduction in that region, Jack Kenya, an American doctor. They've already beheaded one of his colleagues. I just told you I've got Abdel Fattah. Got him how? Percentage. How confident are you that you will kill him today? I don't have eyes on yet, so 50%. No. Call me when it creeps over 80. Catherine Heigl, good morning. Good morning. I'm stressed out just watching that clip. Is this yes. one of those roles where you have this intensive dialogue you have to just memorize a lot of words. It's a lot of urgency. Yes. yes. A lot of exuding urgency. So, um, yeah, and it's a lot of CIA jargon, which is, um, for some reason, a lot harder for me than medical jargon was. <laughs> I don't know why. And sprinkling in a little Arabic and Farsi, yes, right? a little bit. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I was going to say something. Yeah, like I? it's a party trick. Can you? What was it? Hold on. Amal Mikoni Azadi Garbosh. Yep. What does that mean? Rokerthon? No. Oh, yes. yes. It does. And in Farsi. Yeah. Um. Rokerthon's the same in every language. Yes. What did you just say? It means uh, if, you, if one acts, acts, act as a liberator. Oh, okay. Or so they tell me. Very. So I hope that is what it means. All right. Well, you convinced us anyway. Yeah. Um, this show is, is really cool. A lot of people excited and talking about it. And it feels to me like a, kind of a, a thread we're seeing in TV right now. You have strong women in, in these sort of politically related shows, whether it's, it's Homeland uh, or, or your show or Scandal even right. is another one. Um, what attracted you to this role? I think for me, what I found most interesting about it was the idea of sort of looking at the CIA from a different angle. We haven't really seen this side of things, the analysts and Langley and how they how they're responsible for sort of sifting through all the intel that's brought to them by the CIA operatives and the assets out in the field. And they have to, you know, sift through tons and tons and tons of intelligence to narrow down the most critical threats and what's real and what's not and what's just chatter and what's actionable. So um, I kind of wanted to show that vibe and, and it sort of has a bit of a like, I hate comparing things to things, but it's sort of like newsroomy meets Ooh. West Wingy meets Homeland. In. I'm in it. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> you have me at Homeland. <laughs> and you know, there have you have strong female characters. I mean, it's not just your character, but also the president of the United States is played right. by Alfred Woodward. It's kind of cool that it's not a thing. Sometimes Hollywood will say, "Oh, look, here's this female president. Right. Here's this female analyst." Right. The fact that they're female is kind of beside the point. It they're is. just good at their jobs. Exactly. And that's what was really important to me about it, is that this isn't. Let's not make a big thing about you know that it's a female president and it's a woman as her briefer. Let's make it that they're there because they're exceptionally good at what they do, that they um, have earned this place. And uh, and it's not about you know them using their feminine wiles or whatnot to get there. It's just their, their talent, their ability, their level of intelligence and commitment to the country. You, you know? said something recently, Catherine, I thought was so cool and impressive, which was that you've changed the way you think about your career now that you have children of yeah. your own. And in fact, you want to do roles that make your daughter proud. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, from I, I've always gravitated towards characters and stories that I f find some measure of hope or inspiration in. Um, you know, I just want sort of more uplifting stuff. That's just what appeals to me. And I also feel on, on behalf of my kids, I just sort of want to tell those stories, how we survive, how we grow, how we learn from our mistakes versus get, you know, demolished by them. And when we're seeing pictures of your two darling kids, what oh, we're not yeah. seeing is the 34 pets you have in Utah. <laughs> that Did I hear that right? Yeah, I think it's 34. I don't know. I haven't done the math. But, like, what, yeah. So dogs, cats. I have eight dogs, four cats, nine horses, <laughs> two miniature horses, two donkeys, oh two goats, and we had ten chickens, but two died. Do you charge admission to visit your house? <laughs> yeah. Is it like a I think I should, right? Yeah, yeah. I could make a little extra on the side <laughs> for my foundation. That would be great. I hear there's one, one pet that comes with you everywhere you go. Yes. Can we bring Gertie, Gertie on? Gertie, oh, come on in, Gertie. Gertie. Hello, Gertrude. <laughs> Gertie, nice to meet you. <laughs> Catherine, what happened with Gertie at the hotel yesterday? Is there a story oh here? Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. Okay, well, I had to use the facilities, so I went to my mom's room because a lot of people were in my room. And I guess when I got out, she gets really upset and nervous if she can't see me or hear me, so she must have snuck out of my room and suddenly just hear this voice in the hallway like, whose dog is this? Somebody lost their dog. And I'm like, mom! It's probably Gertrude. And so my mom goes out and it's Jennifer Lawrence has my <laughs> dog. Oh, my yes. And I Come was on. so mad because I was like, wait, I love her and I didn't get to meet her. <laughs>